Hi, this is a demonstration of the first release of Pirate Linux. I'm gonna start a new virtual machine. Four gigs of RAM. Fifty two gig hard drive. I'm going to add uh, another hard drive. gonna add another network adapter and I'm gonna actually disconnect both network adapters so the virtual cables are disconnected just so that you can see that this system can be installed completely offline without any internet connection Also, I'm going to add the ISO. And I'm going to start it. So this is the boot menu. The first option is try Ubuntu and this enables you to load the live image which has Pirate Pack pre-installed so it lets you test drive the system without having to make any changes to your hard drives. The next option is install Ubuntu, which is the regular installation. It precedes common options in order to not ask you too many questions. It precedes full disk encryption. It then installs the base Ubuntu system and it installs Pirate Pack completely from source and it all happens automatically and if you don't want to wait for it to compile from source you can do the fast install it contains the pre-compiled binaries in pirate pack and if you trust my signed binaries you can use that I also included uh, Liberté, which is a privacy enhanced lightweight distribution, and Tails, which is another privacy enhanced popular distribution. Before you install, it's wise to check the disk for any defects. So I'm going to now guide you through the regular installation. So, if you have more than one network device, it asks you which one to choose. Since we're doing an offline installation, it doesn't matter. So, I'll just choose the first one.
that's fine do not configure the network choose your time zone now if you have more than one hard drive it will ask you which hard drive to choose make sure you choose the one that you want to install the system on it's gonna pretty much erase that hard drive so make sure you get it right I mean you can still probably recover files but it won't be easy so make sure you back up your files so I'm gonna choose the first one with 55 gigabytes that's probably the best way to identify which hard drive it is by how many gigabytes it is here it asks for your confirmation to write to the hard drive yes now it asks you for your encryption key I recommend at least 20 characters And again it asks you whether it can write to your hard drive, yes. So now it's installing the base system. This should take a few minutes. Once the base system is installed, it will ask you for your username that you want. So just select a name. Choose the password. And now it is installing the main system. It's gonna install all the basic Ubuntu packages. This my this will take a little longer than the base system. So now this part is finishing. And it's automatically going to continue to install the grub bootloader. Well, 
it says finishing installation but this is where the pirate pack installation starts running preceded means it's running my preceded script that will install pirate pack and since this is the regular install it's gonna use the full package the regular package that has the all prefix so it works for any architecture because it installs completely from source so it can take a while maybe between uh, 20 to 40 minutes I never actually timed it <laughs> but uh, yeah there's of course the other option of the faster install and it doesn't just install pirate pack it also has to install the dependencies so it creates an offline repository and it adds that and gets all the dependencies installs pirate pack which automatically compiles everything it needs and you don't really have to worry about it, you don't have to do anything except just wait for it to happen so you can uh, keep waiting and okay so now it's done you can remove the CD mm. okay I'll just continue So when you boot the machine from the hard drive that you installed on, then you might get a screen like this. I think it depends on how you turned off the machine. Just select the first option. Now it asks you for your encryption password, so type it in. Enter. you might get a nicer screen on a real machine I don't know what the virtual machine it gives me kind of bad visuals but okay it's starting up so here's the login screen put your password for your account and it's starting so as you see Tor started here in the background but the internet is disconnected so it's not gonna go on so
so now the internet's connecting. However, Tor will still probably stay in this state because you started it with the internet disconnected, so you may have to stop it and start it again. Regularly, when you turn on your machine with the internet connected, it will automatically turn on and it should turn green to signal that it's on. Sometimes it takes a few minutes for it to do so. You can even read the message log, but usually you don't have to do anything. So yeah, it's loading. So there, it's green. So now I'm out of the virtual machine and I'm using my physical machine which has Pirate Linux installed. It just makes it easier for me to record in uh, high quality graphics. Uh, the first thing I'm going to show you is Firefox. When you start it up for the first time, you get a few pop-ups here. They just come up the first time to show you what add-ons you've installed. And um, here is the start page it's a custom start page that I made to look kind of like the Google page but with a pirate theme and uh, some uh, more interesting links here the search bar has uh, Google search which is just the Google search, well, encrypted Google search, and there's pirate search, which makes a search query to the uh, the pirate bay to search for torrents. So I'll show you the add-ons. They are ad block. Plus, Bloody Vikings, Download Helper, Ghostery, and HTTPS Everywhere. So Adblock Plus is good for blocking ads. I'll show you Bloody Vikings, uh, Download Helper, I'll show you that also. Ghostery is good for looking at what kind of trackers are on the websites you're on. And uh, HTTPS Everywhere tries to use the HTTPS protocol whenever possible in order to encrypt your communications on the web. So an example of how to use Bloody Vikings, if I go to a website and I want to register then I need an email address so what you do is you right click click on bloody vikings generates a random email address it chooses this 10 minute mail it chooses other services too but 10 minute mail is the default one it uh, gives you a 10 minute long email address that you can use just for uh, verification purposes so you sign up here the site that you sign up sign up on is probably gonna send you some kind of email here it's gonna show up you have to click confirm you come back and you're done and you didn't have to give away you, your identity by using some email address you usually use so it's very uh, nice and convenient 
so now I'll show you how to use the download helper you can go for example to YouTube select music find a song now if you wanna convert this to an mp3 for example you can go here and um, select some quality for example medium quality download and convert mp3 uh, since it's the first time you run this you have to enable it okay um, FFmpeg is already installed by pirate pack so you don't have to worry about that just uh, close downloads and it goes into this uh, DW helper folder mp3 appears here and it says conversion job completed so you can play it I guess you can't hear it because I'm on headphones but plays fine just like an mp3 um, also notice that flash automatically played in the browser that's because pirate pack pre-installed the ubuntu restricted extras which includes the media plugins such as flash and uh, various encoding decoding uh, media plugins graphics plugins also with this download helper you can uh, convert to videos like mp4s, flvs which are video formats now I'll show you how the Tor browser works It loads pretty quickly because Tor is running in the background. Um, Pidgin just opened up, but this time it banned me. Usually this doesn't happen, but well, Pidgin is the chat client, and um, normally it connects to the OFTC.net server, and you can um, you can join the rooms there. There's the Tor room in there and it's connected with OTR the Pidgin uh, has the OTR plugin and it's connected through Tor um, so some other add-ons were installed bloody vikings HTTPS everywhere no script um, instead of ghostry uh, no script is a bit more aggressive it um, you have to kind of manually set which um, which pages you want to allow scripts on and Tor button which provides security features for using Tor with Firefox so like right now my IP address is this one here and you can even so 
the exit router is in the UK. Wait, that's yeah, the same one. And you can uh, select a new identity. So then, when you check your IP address, okay, maybe you have to do it twice. Sometimes it doesn't work like that. Okay, I think now I got connected to Pidgin, to the IRC room with Pidgin. Okay, so now it's a different uh, exit node that I'm using, so a different identity. Um, if you want to contribute to the Tor network also, I mean, you don't need the browser on for this. You can have this running in the background. Just uh, You can go to settings and... Um, you can uh, relay traffic inside the Tor network I would recommend this this uh, you may have to watch out because you might get complaints from your network administrator or ISP but either way it's good to contribute so yeah you can uh, set that up but by default it just runs as a client And uh, yeah, you can also use the onion addresses. I don't have one as an example right now, but you can find one. Um, yeah, you can also check here the network map. It shows it shows the nodes that are connected here to the Tor network. and when you close it Pidgin also closes but again you can still keep using this and you can change your settings here and keep it going all the time so you may also be interested in a VPN virtual private network um, so if you just go here VPN PPCA VPN It takes you to the page of the Pirate Party of Canada's VPN service. The instructions are here. Uh, it's still not fully integrated with uh, Pirate Linux, but the Pirate Pack has a feature that allows it to install the VPN automatically if it's given a special format of the file, actually a dot .pirate format that I made so it just needs to get integrated on the server side and uh, it can work another feature you might want to check out is Bitcoin Uh, the party's stance on Bitcoin is a little unclear right now, so I don't want to promote it, but it's here in case you want to use it. Um, so yeah, now it's synchronizing with network, it's downloading the blockchain. I just want to show you a program I made that uses Bitcoin. So here we have an address, copy it, go to my program, C Wallet. Um, so here are the default uh, wallet file directory, output directory, and uh, paste the address, click generate, and there is the QR code of the private key corresponding to that address. Uh, on the top is the address and on the bottom is the private key, so it's in uh, PDF format, you can easily print it out and make a paper backup of the wallet. You should also probably store encrypted uh, backups but paper backup is a stable way to
keep it back up. And uh, actually, there's also uh, a non graphical version of it. It dumps your address and, and key pairs. Um, there's some other options. You can QR encode from, uh, from the command line also. So you can uh, check that out. Another thing I want to add about C Wallet is it doesn't just read from your wallet file and get the address and uh, private key. It also checks to make sure that the given uh, private key actually co correctly corresponds to the address. Uh, it does so by doing a multiplication in elliptic curve space. That's the standard way to check it. Um, so it's a good way to check if your wallet file is corrupted without having to run the Bitcoin client or having to make any transactions. I'm not sure if the Bitcoin client can do this check also, whether it does this check also when it starts up, but I think it's a good way to check. It's just a simple algorithm that does the check using the standard libraries and it will notify you if there's something wrong with the address. Uh, a program you should definitely take a close look at is Pidgin. It's a general purpose instant messenger manager you can add various accounts from various types of instant messaging protocols like IRC with IRC you can uh, well okay let's just add an example or no let's just cancel it Okay, uh, so plugins. You can go here to off the record messaging. I definitely recommend this. It was pre installed but not enabled. You click here, configure plugin. Um, so, well, first you need an account. So, okay, if I tools now manage accounts okay so yeah let's just add an account IRC okay you should set it to SSL put this If you want to use Tor, you can go through here, but a lot of chat rooms span it. Like you would have to point it to the SOX address. So now you have an account. Yeah, so you can generate a key. So this generates a cryptographic key enabling you to have private messages between people on IRC and other chat protocols too. There's some, you should get to know it. I mean, when you go here, you can click on OTR, start private conversation. Well, okay, that's not going to work with <laughs> you have to do it with a specific person but okay 
and uh, yeah of course also the Tor browser comes with uh, Pidgin that as I showed you automatically load in so you can look at that too also I forgot to point out but uh, since Tor is running in the background it makes it really easy to connect applications to Tor so for example if you wanna run Bitcoin through Tor you can go to settings options then connect through a SOX proxy Bitcoin already knows that 9050 is the default for Tor the port for Tor so you can keep those settings and uh, you say OK so now Bitcoin should be running through Tor maybe you have to restart it to make sure but yeah you can do the same with Pidgin and proxy settings so it's localhost 9050 that's the typical uh, port for connecting applications through SOX to Tor so I don't want to go through all the applications so I'll just uh, show you where you can uh, look at some more of the relevant applications so I went to Ubuntu Software Center and then I type pirate pack it should show up if you have pirate Linux installed um, click on more info and as you see here the add-ons these are the optional dependencies of pirate pack um, so they're, they're, they come from the Ubuntu repositories Amule is a really useful uh, P2P client useful for ebooks especially Akiga is like Skype it's a phone slash video chat program it's open source GIMP is a really popular and useful f photo uh, editor you can remix your images there um, I have LM sensors here it's a command line tool for reading your temperature voltage and your fan information of, of your mm -hmm. system onboard is a virtual keyboard which is useful for uh, preventing uh, keyloggers so you can just uh, click on the keyboard graphically uh, fetch pH uh, so this is a batch processor and uh, image inspector what's useful is it can take out uh, metadata from your images that metadata can uh, uh, can contain uh, private information that you may want to take out uh, transmission will anyways I think onboard and transmission are already included with standard uh, Ubuntu so they're not really needed so much to be like dependencies of Pirate Pack but anyways they're here so yeah it's a torrent client really useful okay so TTF liberation these are fonts I mainly ended up adding them because I was with the Microsoft fonts it was giving me this screen and I wanted to do a silent install and I couldn't get rid of that screen that says do you accept this agreement so I just put this and it I said it conflicts with the other Microsoft fonts and it worked out well and yeah they're open source and uh, Ubuntu restricted extras it's a nice big package full of uh, codecs and media plugins like flash um, obviously they're not open source but it's the best I guess we have to play certain kinds of media like mp3 so you can uh, check those out 
also another thing updates your update manager should automatically uh, keep track of updates for your system and that will include pirate pack updates because pirate pack added the pirate linux repository automatically if you want you can uh, get rid of that subscription shouldn't be hard to do that um, so anytime so the default is that anytime you click install updates all the updates are going to install including pirate pack updates if you want to read the source code ahead of time you can uh, not download the pirate pack update you can sub subscribe out of it um, or you can uh, update it but it will go inside your cache uh, directory I think it's slash var slash cache slash apt slash archives and there it'll, the pirate pack will go so you can read it after just to make sure that what was installed is actually something not malicious something uh, like you can read the source code and you know since it compiles from source code um, then uh, what you read is what you get what actually happened um, unless of course you're using the binary version if you, if you did the, ins the fast install then you're using the binary version so that means you trust my binaries um, okay actually for updates there's gonna be probably an update coming the C wallet program I checked and sometimes it um, it prints the private key overlaid with the QR code in some cases I think it's when the private key is sometimes shorter than normal so then you can just generate a new key and then it should work eventually but yeah just a small bug and it'll probably come in the next update another feature I should show is the actual pirate pack program it's a, a graphical interface so you can click on disable and all the local modifications are pretty much gone that pirate pack did the programs the main programs are the binaries they are still located but they still exist but they're not accessible through your local path because it's been disabled like also if you search now for for Tor you can't anymore or Bitcoin or whatever other program I mean the like the Ubuntu programs like uh, GIMP are are there but just the the ones that were compiled into Pirate Pack so so what happens is also like the Firefox add-ons they're gone but you can easily re-enable it and it's back on with the add-ons and also Tor is back on there's also commands you can do on the command line with the pirate pack program but uh, that's pretty much it and yeah when uh, when you restart when you log out and log back in the theme will update
back to what it was when you enable it another thing you should know about is that uh, when you do the regular installation alongside with compiling all the binaries pirate pack also um, generates a Debian package that contains those binaries that you compiled on your machine so you can uh, access them in opt slash pirate so slash op slash pirate pack slash bin pack and it's here so you can uh, make a copy of that and you can share it uh, with a friend if they trust your binaries uh, they can uh, quickly uh, install pirate pack or you can keep it for yourself to install on another machine you know that the good thing is that you know that these binaries were compiled on your machine and you know the source code that corresponds to those binaries so that's also actually how I compile the binary that's how I generate the binary versions of pirate pack I just run regular pirate pack and it generates the binaries for me As you may recall, in the boot menu there was Start Liberté and Start Tails. So if you need the specialized features provided by these distros, you can reboot your system with the by booting from the USB or the disk that has Pyre Linux. I'm gonna do it in a virtual machine okay so if you want Liberté you click enter on start Liberté Okay, here's Liberté. Has basic, it's very lightweight. Well, I think this is the browser. So you can check that out. You can uh, log out, shut down, and it's a live CD, so it doesn't write to your disk, obviously. Okay. You can also try Tails. It's based on Debian Live.
so it connects you to Tor automatically in their browser. Iceweasel is the default Debian browser. They have some similar programs, Pidgin. Okay, I'm not sure if it's conflicting with my tour that's running in my actual machine. So they're synchronizing the clock because there could be maybe some kind of timing attacks or something. Uh, but their show, their tour shows up as on, so can refresh okay yeah it's fine so it's based on Debian so it's pretty familiar you can check it out Shut down. Yeah, I haven't really tested out so much um, tails with my system. I just put whatever they had from the ISO on it, and it should work. But I see some problems with it, um, like when it shuts down, it it's supposed to do a RAM eraser procedure but it's not really doing it I think with the previous version it was working better now this is 0 0.10 so maybe because I'm running a VM or maybe because I'm running it mixed with other systems but anyways and you can of course just start the live uh, version of the base pirate linux the ubuntu pirate linux So it's just like the regular version except uh, it just runs in your RAM and from your disk or USB and it doesn't make any changes to your um, hard disk. So. Yeah, once you're done, just shut it down. And uh, yeah, it usually won't be so fast if you're running it on a DVD, but from a USB it should be pretty fast. So thanks for watching, I hope um, that it's uh, 